Mistral AI, I think, made history early this morning when they released their new model called Pixtral. And Pixtral is so much more than just another LLM or a mixture of experts model coming from Mistral AI. It's a step change in what we've seen from open source in terms of multimodal models, in terms of what these models have been capable of right out of the box. And it sets a tone for the end of 2024 and leading into 2025 for what we hope to see from open source. Obviously, we've seen massive advancements from Meta this summer and people doing a lot of derivative work with those models. But it's really cool to see Mistral stepping up to the plate again with a release that I think is as monumental as their first Mistral 01 LLM release. So I want to get into more details about Pixtral, what makes it so monumental, and how we kind of found out about this earlier this morning. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. This is the actual magnet link that showed up on Twitter this morning. I wish I lived in France because I would have been up to see this right away. And for whatever reason, when Mistral releases models with a magnet link like this, as opposed to just posting a blog post and then directly pointing to Hugging Face, I think they're actually much more impactful. Why they do this, I don't know. Maybe they're just goofy and French. But nonetheless, it's really exciting. So what actually is this model? So what they're calling this is Pixtral. And Pixtral is effectively the first multimodal model we're seeing from Mistral AI. Sure, we've seen other open source multimodal models that have come before, uh, even those not explicitly from Meta. And I'll get to those in just a bit. But what we know for now, at least from some people who have done some digging and from the live event where this model was actually released in France, we know a few things. What we know about Pixtral right now is that it's a 12 billion parameter vision language model. It's roughly based on a Mistral Nemo 12B text backbone. It uses a 400 million parameter vision adapter, which uses a GLU and 2D rope for a lot of the vision aspects. It in theory has a much larger vocabulary than Nemo. There are specific tokens that you use in the chat format to actually define when you're giving image input. It roughly supports 1000 by 1000 pixel images with a patch size of 16 by 16 pixels, which is actually how it progresses and kind of ingests images. There's tokenizer support already in Mistral Common, which was actually updated on GitHub a few days ago, which is pretty interesting. The model weights are in their raw form in EF16, and we actually haven't seen the inference code yet. So no one has actually been able to run this currently, but we have all the weights. And granted, this is as of earlier this morning, so there's a good chance that we'll see a lot of this come out soon. So where did this actually all come from? So this all arises from an event, which was the Mistral AI Summit featuring Jensen Wong and Arthur Mensch. So the funny thing is it's probably a little bit dumb that we're surprised we saw a massive release here. I mean, it would be sort of funny if Mistral had this whole summit and then just didn't actually release anything of note. But this is a pretty big time event and they actually teased some really interesting things that are in Pixtral. Pixtral being kind of the token release of this entire event. And one thing that I think was interesting that they mentioned is that Mistral understands how people really use open source models. For instance, people use GPT-4 and cloud in really different ways than they use local models. And that's not just when it comes to hardware or what they're able to actually do with them. It's what people are creating with them, how people are reconfiguring them, and um, just generally acknowledging there's a difference at all. And whether this means that Mistral is looking forward to having some sort of licensing scheme or making their model the go-to for local AI developers, we'll just have to wait and see. The funny thing is Swix here, who's a great source, who you should definitely follow on X, he mentioned that a lot of these slides seem oddly similar to a lot of what was coming out of OpenAI. And obviously OpenAI has been kind of slow to allow users to actually use and interact with the multimodal functionality in GPT-4 Omni. Now it's all there, but there were months where they claimed these features existed, but no one could actually use them. And what's interesting is this is a slide where Mistral is talking about what they see as the most useful attributes of AI models, which is orchestration, so things like tool calls and function calling, multimodality, which previously we hadn't seen in basically any publicly available Mistral AI projects, instruction following, which has been an, a strong suit of Mistral for quite some time, and strong reasoning and capacity to identify user intent, which is a really cool thing that Mistral also has been quite good at on the open source side, especially outside of Meta. And when their CEO took the stage, things started to get really interesting. Obviously, they were talking about all of their great models, the latest being Codistral, which they consider a custom model, then the other various categories they have. So their latest models, the latest being uh, Mistral Nemo, research models like 
Codistrol Mamba, and then general models. And what I find interesting, having talked a lot about small models recently on this channel, is that small low latency models are seen as the most generally applicable to users of AI models, uh, along with obviously large models, but um, low latency is still king in terms of user experience. And then they said, we have a model update to show you. So obviously there were some updates to Mr. Large 2, with the idea that you can fit it all on a single H100 node and bring things like stronger function calling, and also showing that Mistral Large 2 as an open source model is performing at a level that is certainly competitive with Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-4 Omni as of August 6th, which is really pretty cool because at this point, it's really interesting to see that Llama 31405B is now kind of just the standard. It's no longer outperforming everyone and it's cool to see that Mistral is still keeping up, especially since we didn't hear a lot from them over the summer. What's interesting is it wasn't necessarily all roses. Even the publicly available benchmarks for Mistral Large 2 didn't look great for code. Mistral Large 2 is great, but it's not that much better than Meta's Llama 31405B still basically sitting at number three. And they mentioned some interesting stuff about fine tuning as well, which is kind of cool, but this doesn't really apply to most people who are running this model on their own GPUs. And obviously the most exciting slides that we wanna to get to here is the release of Pixtral, which is actually quite different since a lot of the other open source multimodal large language models are focused on an architecture or built around an architecture called Lava which requires fixed image sizes, uh, can really only do a small number of tasks, and can really only work on one image at a time, which is something where Pixtral actually steps out into a new area of state of the art for open source models. So this is what it looks like. What's pretty cool is no one really knew this was coming. Obviously, since Jensen was there, it was basically the most important announcement of the entire event. And here's how they initially pitched it. So it's multimodal, understanding both images and text. It can support images with arbitrary sizes, which seems to people who aren't developers like the dumbest thing ever, but this is actually a really important technical advancement. It has a large context window, um, which is basically the standard, you know, 128,000 tokens, which is crazy to say, just seeing how far we've come in a year. And the architecture information to me was most interesting. It's fast on all image sizes, which also means it's quite good on high resolution images for tasks like OCR. And it's designed to support an arbitrary number of images, which again, I know seems like a really simple thing, but it was a huge sticking point and a really big challenge that most people basically for the entire summer had no clue how to get past. And the key to this is that token size I was talking about. So. We obviously process text into tokens in large language models that are working with a single text modality. And the challenge here is how we think about images as tokens, just like we think of text as tokens. And this 16 by 16 pixel patch is how we do that. So as opposed to looking at the whole image, this model will pass it into a vision transformer encoder and look at patches of 16 by 16 pixels and then flatten that into a sequence of image embeddings, just as you would with text if you were looking at sentences or paragraphs. And the performance is quite impressive, especially for a 12 billion parameter model when we're comparing to larger multimodal models from Meta. And the benchmarks they show are pretty incredible. This is not just something that's barely eking out ahead like we were looking at with DeepSeek version 2.5. This is substantially ahead of Cloud 3 Haiku and Gemini 1.5 8B. So obviously larger models like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-4 Omni are still going to outperform this model. But then again, they're closed source and I've been doing this for quite a bit longer and it's a very different set of um, use cases and applications. But when comparing this to Cloud3 Haiku, which I think a 12 billion parameter model or somewhere within there is kind of within striking distance, a Pixtral 12B is certainly exceeding expectations, even on things like MathVista, ChartQA, and DocVQA. And if anything, the score on DocVQA shows that OCR is something that Pixtral absolutely dominates in. And there have been some other models like Moondream that have tried to do this and that have been quite good but I'm really excited to see what we get with fine tunes and modifications of this model. And that's always been the coolest part of Mistral model releases. It's not necessarily what they can do on day one and basic updates from their developers, but it's what people actually do with these models, which in my opinion is the entire point of open source AI and open source large language models. Let's get into some demos of what this model can actually do. So we have uh, OCR content, which is nearly perfect, even with all of these uh, complex math characters. Their handwritten documents, which is completely nuts, and the fact that it's doing this uh, in multiple languages is also quite cool. Information extraction is something that initially Cloud Sonnet claimed to be one of the only models that could really do this. 
and clearly Pixtral is just as capable, if not more capable. I would say more useful because you can run this on your own GPU, ostensibly since it's just a 12 billion parameter model. Although right now the weights are sitting right at around 25 gigs. So if you have less than 25 gigs, I'm sure there'll be quants out momentarily as soon as we get the inference code. Now, extracting context is just one aspect of what you might use this model to do. And what's cool is this model clearly can understand complex images and then reason about them. And this is something where I've noticed that GPT-4 Omni will occasionally kind of break down trying to do. But clearly, in terms of drawing diagrams or drawing basic flow charts and then having them turned into code, which in my opinion, I also consider code as a totally separate modality than text. This is incredibly impressive. Just a few months ago, the kind of idea that you would draw something, scan it into an LLM, and then end up with a working kind of even just HTML or CSS was something that was, that was a wildly new feature in Anthropics models. And the idea that you can do this with Pixtral now, at least they're claiming as such, is really wild. Uh, also, you can, I guess, now use Pixtral to answer online test questions, which, you know, there are enough GPT-4 wrappers that do this already, but it's incredibly cool. And one thing that I also think is quite interesting with Mistral is that their Q&As are always exceedingly juicy. Obviously, there are people who want to ask Mark Zuckerberg questions about Llama, but the developers who work with Mistral, uh, they're all, you know, very well versed in how a lot of these things work. So they're less, you know, consumer level questions of like, oh, can you put images in or can it look at a picture of a bike and why would that not work? And they're actually very core questions about how this model works. So the fine tuning service that Mistral mentioned earlier is unfortunately SFT only and doesn't necessarily look at uh, RL negative rewards, which is an interesting choice, but makes sense if you are going to be deploying this at scale. Pixtral has not yet been tested with video frames, but they've looked at this trying PFF and video should technically work with the with the 128,000 token context window. The curious thing to see here is how efficient their tokenizer is with images. Basically, if their patching algorithm works well, and it'll be really interesting to see, you know, let's say if you could reduce a 15 second video at a low frame rate in, how well the model actually retains being able to look at things that understands context within those frames, just as you would look at within, again, sentences or paragraphs or pages of a book that you've given to an LLM. And what's really cool is in theory, uh, someone asked the question if Pixtral could work on satellite images and in theory it should. And the reason behind this question is not super apparent initially. And what I think they're kind of hinting at with this answer is that you can input tiled data that is overlapped into this model. And in theory, it will understand where the boundaries of overlap are, which is something that we've seen with highly proprietary models. And I've actually worked with very rudimentary models years ago that were meant to do this with um, synthetic aperture radar imagery. But it would be incredible to have this in an open source model that basically anyone could use. Um, it would also be cool to like use that to direct a, a quadcopter or something. And then there was an incredible keynote with Jensen, which is incredibly cool. Uh, you should definitely check this out on Swix's X account, which I'll link below. But all around an incredible release. And yeah, unfortunately right now on the Hugging Face card, which again, I'll link below, there just isn't a lot of information. It's pretty much just another link to where you can download this model. Some of the release information on GitHub showing kind of what their hints were, which Mistral also seems to do when they make fun of us for not actually seeing this release coming. And again, hopefully we get the code to actually run this very soon. Their encoding code is interesting because they're just using PIL and a really basic Python tooling. So I'm excited to see um, when you can actually, I'm excited to see maybe some improved tooling around this and just how people interact with this. But I can't wait to run this on my local GPUs. I can't wait to use all of the credits I have left for H100s to run this. And um, yeah, so let me know what you think about this release. Are you excited about this? Do you think it's not that impressive because it's just not a very big model? Do you think Mistral is going to release an even bigger multimodal model um, in the fall or maybe in 2025? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, as always, I hope you learned something in this video. If you want a great source for GPUs, check out my Vast AI uh, affiliate link below. If you liked our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.